Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that whatever you've been up to today, Wednesday, the 24th of November. <laughs> hey, so in a month's time, it'll be Christmas, wouldn't it? It'll be Christmas, wouldn't it? I hope that whatever you've been up to has been productive. I've been up in seven. I've got my child ready to go to school. He's, he wanted me to clean his bedroom. His bedroom's not dirty, but if there's a little bit of dust where we live, it's in the countryside and we open the windows and we get dust coming into the, the house. So, um, he wanted me to clean it. So I've mopped my child's floors in his bedroom and then I've dusted his test of drawers, dusted his aeroplanes they had on display. And I do my washing. I don't know about yourself. And now I'm thinking of what to cook for my child's dinner. We're going to do sausages and mash today, bangers and mash. I fed the fish and got fish. I don't know about yourself. What are you up to? So I wanted to look at verbs, type of verbs. A lot of people, you let yourselves down when you submit your brilliant stories because you are filling in mechanics. Mechanics simply means use of English your kind of English, and that flair that sets you apart. I read a story, um, yesterday was it, I was so blown away by the story, but the writer let themselves down with the transitive verbs. So, you know, I decided to come and look at transitive verbs today, where she could easily walk away with $20. We're looking at, you know, not being shortlisted because you don't know what transitive verbs are. That's because the way English is taught in it in some countries. So sometimes the action isn't a progressive one in a verb. And so we call them static verbs. They might describe a state, an emotion, a feeling. Let me use the verb to know. Please do not say, I am knowing you. How about the verb to see? I am seeing you. We don't say that. In colloquial speech, we say, I'm not liking that. When you're writing, you for your stories, uh, in a competition, you're not going to say, I am liking my boyfriend. No. So some verbs describe an action that took place over a period of time. Some verbs refer to one, a one-off state, an emotion. You either know or you don't know. So you say, I know your name. I see you're not really very active on my page. We can also use a modal to strengthen the probability or the duration of the verb. Very often, the modal verb we use is can. I can see you. We might use could. I couldn't see you because it was dark. We might also use the um, helping verb, the auxiliary to do. I don't know you. I didn't see you, your car parked there. So when we want to inflect some verbs, say verbs, so refer to your emotions or feelings, we often use the verb to do or can or could. So this is where people are getting themselves all modelled because um, maybe in your beautiful languages you don't have verbs that can only be used to this in the way I'm describing. I don't even know. I don't want to waffle. So a fixed state and a fixed action. We don't use the progressive tense. You can't say I'm not knowing. I saw that in someone's story. So basically. I don't want you to then start thinking, well, I've seen the word knowing. I've seen the word seeing. What, what's she talking about? Gerons. Earlier in the workshop, we distinguish between the present participle <laughs> and a gerund. A gerund is a verb that is now being used as a noun often an abstract noun, and then you see it in the start of the sentence, you see it becomes a subject, 
but then it hasn't got an auxiliary, which is the helping verb. So knowing he might be teased by the other boys, Marvel to use the underpass. You have it as knowing he would be laughed at, Mavuti took the underpass to avoid the group of boys. Knowing he would be laughed at, it becomes a subject phrase. So knowing there ends in ing, but it is a gerund. It's my subject. So don't get confused when you see the an ing verb functioning as a subject and you start thinking, well, what's she talking about? So I can say, I am knowing. No, you can't. Because the same word in English might be a noun. It might also be a verb. That's why we started this work to looking at parts of speech. Seen is something that tips people up all the time. I am seeing you. No. <laughs> you can either see me or not. So I see you standing there trying to hide. I can see you. I could see you from across the road, young lady, because you're wearing bright yellow. Old lady. Okay, so when to when we want to modify static verbs, we can use the auxiliary verb to do, or we can use a modal verb can or could. I am going to repost this again tomorrow because I know it's going to be a while for people to understand what I'm saying. How about event verbs? Some verbs in English are event verbs. They describe one of event. For example, to die. My flowers died because I didn't water them. Can I also say my flowers are dying? It depends on the state, you know, that I'm describing sometimes. But flowers are dying because I'm not watching them. When we dis we refer into someone that passed, we say he died. So in that case, when we refer into people, we often say he died. Sometimes we can say he's dying from cancer. Other event verbs like the verb to give birth takes place, um, doesn't take the progressive. So and a good event verb to use would be Mary gave birth to Jesus Christ. We don't say Mary is birthing Jesus Christ in the stable. So we say Mary gave birth. We often use another verb to help. So we often say to give birth. So Mary gave birth. Not Mary's giving birth to Jesus. Have you heard that? Mary's giving birth. So she gave birth to Jesus. So event verbs. How about born? I am born in. No, I was born. To be born is what we say. How about my grandfather is passing away? No, my grandfather passed away. Event verbs. When the event took place once, we use it mostly in the simple past, don't we? Or we use another verb to help it. When we want to use a verb phrase, often in the verb phrase we'd have an auxiliary plus an auxiliary plus a main verb. Main verbs can be inflected. So most main verbs can be used in the simple past, the past continuous, present continuous. They can be inflected. So my example would be Pempo. Pempo, you my sentence. Has been learning to crochet quilled covers. Has plus been plus learning. Learning there is my main verb. Has been learning. Present perfect continuous tense. Has is my auxiliary from the verb to have. Been, I borrowed from the verb to be, plus learning. 
Can you have a look at the sentence on the screen, ladies and gentlemen? Sticking with the verb to learn, let's inflect it. Penpo learned to crochet <laughs> while living with his nan. Penpo, I'm taking the make. I am learning to bake cakes. Penpo has learned to crochet quilt covers. Can I have a look at my sentences? The verb to learn takes place over a period of time. In it, did you see the duration? You, you know, you can learn to do something over a period of time. So it's an action verb, isn't it? Some verbs are action verbs. Are you ready to move on to auxiliaries? So sometimes we have verbs which are auxiliaries. I had a very interesting conversation with a brilliant young lady on the page where we were looking at how auxiliaries are presented here and how auxiliaries are taught in Sub-Saharan Africa. As far as I know, judging by my reference, which is Cambridge English, which is where I get most of my information from, Cambridge English Online and for my head as well. <laughs> you know, I know three auxiliary verbs. And that's what Cambridge um, English said. They said the auxiliary verbs are to be, to have, to do. I don't know how modal verbs are taught in your various countries, you know. So you can, you can go what your teachers told you and what's on your syllabus. You know, I go with what I know and what I was taught. The verb to be is a helping verb. I'm going to go... Back to Pempo. Pempo, you're probably going to hate me after this. Pempo is learning to crochet quilt covers. E to crochet quilt covers. Can I have a look at my sentences? The verb to learn takes place over a period of time. In it, did you see the duration? You, you know, you can learn to do something over a period of time. So it's an action verb, isn't it? Some verbs are action verbs. Are you ready to move on to auxiliaries? So sometimes we have verbs which are auxiliaries. I had a very interesting conversation with a brilliant young lady on the page where we were looking at how auxiliaries are presented here and how auxiliaries are taught in Sub-Saharan Africa. As far as I know, judging by my reference, which is Cambridge English, which is where I get most of my information from, Cambridge English Online, and for my head as well. <laughs> you know, I know three auxiliary verbs, and that's what Cambridge um, English said. They said the auxiliary verbs are to be, to have, to do. I don't know how modal verbs are taught in your various countries, you know, so... You can, you can go what your teachers told you and what's on your syllabus. You know, I go with what I know and what I was taught. The verb to be is a helping verb. I'm going to go back to Pempo. Pempo, you're probably going to hate me after this. Pempo is learning to crochet quilt covers. Is, because Pempo is a singular noun. Is learning. It's is from the verb to be. Is. How about if I want to describe an action that took place in the past? Pempo was learning to crochet quilled covers. Was. How about the verb to have? Going back to my previous example. Pempo has been learning to crochet quilled covers. How about the past perfect? Pempo had learned to crochet quilt covers before he opened his own tailor shop. <laughs> Let's use another name. 
auxiliary verbs can inflect as well. What has Babatunde stolen? Has. Babatunde is a singular noun. What have Babatunde and Omotunji stolen? What have they stolen? Really? Oh, Pempo, your name has come up again. <laughs> Does Pempo still like Nisima? So, I'm using the verb to do to ask a question. Does Pempo still like Nisima? Omotunji is the fastest athlete. Omotunji is. So, on my page, I've looked at how the third person in the present tense, in all four present tenses, we use an S. Let me go over that. Because people have only just joined the page and be like, what is she talking about? There are four present tenses. I don't know how you talk English where you are. Present simple. Present continuous. Present perfect. Present, perfect, continuous. Bob Suwanko, that's the easiest way to learn English. Present, simple. Can they? Likes playing the violin. Can they is a third person singular noun. He likes, with an S. Present, simple. He likes playing the violin. Now, I'm going to use another verb to play because I can't say he's like him. That's why I chose it. We're talking about stative verbs. Present continuous. Can a twing is playing the violin at the minute? That's the noise. <laughs> Can a is playing the violin? Present continuous. Can a has played the violin since he was 18 years old. Kenne has been playing the violin since 7 o'clock this morning and his neighbours are getting fed up with him. <laughs> Kenne, your arms up and having a laugh. So, how about when we have linking verbs? Some verbs link up with other phrases and other clauses to the meaning. <laughs> so, linking verbs need to link up with other um, verbs. Like some men come on here and say, baby, can we link up? Say, I'm not a linking verb. Linking verbs are accompanied by phrases. Example, noun phrases. In noun phrases, the operative word is going to be a noun. Adjective phrases, the operative word, the main word is going to be an adjective. I'm not going over them again. It took ages to teach and they're on my page. Adverb phrases, the main important word is going to be an adverb because the phrase is functioning, you know, to modify a verb or maybe qualify an adjective. Prepositional phrases will begin with the preposition, the word express a direction, connect words together. I'm not going to go over them again, they're on my page. I'm going to repost those videos for newcomers. So linking verbs need a verb to explain the action, to give clarity to the meaning. Kane, Kane Kawinga. Kane has become what? We can't just say can it has become. Trust me, I see them sentences like those. I see this off sentences. Can it has become like what's this person say? <laughs> My boyfriend become. Can it has become what? A good violinist. Did you say did you see um how the verb to have helps become? Did you see how a helping verb came in, an auxiliary? Kane has become what? A good violinist. Babatunje's 
Babatin J's reaction seemed. I was getting a story, and then the person was using <laughs> linking verbs like these, and the text, and the same, and that's the end of a sentence. I'm like, they want me to chuckle my shepherd's pie. <laughs> Seen at home, sure. Hey, my shepherd's spot. And you'll be having a nice time where you wearing your leggings, and I'll be dead. Because <laughs> you need know, I was getting your story. So, I was like, text what? Seemed what? And I said, it sounds like you've laughed. How blessed. Babatunji seemed. Babatunde's reaction seemed a bit over the top. Seemed how or what? Please have a look at the sentence on the screen. Okay. Transitive verbs. I have looked at transitive verbs over five times and then newcomers join the page and then they can't use transitive verbs. And I watch you talking about. Transitive verbs means they are verbs which transmit or pass on their action. You don't have them in your beautiful languages. I can tell you don't have them in your beautiful languages because it just goes over people's heads. So, some verbs in English are incomplete without a preposition. You don't use a preposition, you haven't used a verb. One such verb, my dear, dear friend, who I'm not going to name, is fit. To fit in is the verb. To fit plus something. How do you know what a verb is, whether it's transitive or intransitive? Please go to Collins English Learner's Dictionary. There are various forms of Collins English Dictionaries. Collins English Learners. You go type Collins English Learners in Dictionary or Learning English. It will come up. And then you're going to look at the verb up that you want to use in your story. The verb fit, F-I-T. And there you'd see the first form of the verb. You'd see the second form. You'd see the third form. And then you'd have it will tell you whether it's transitive or intransitive. You will to fit something. That's how you know that you can't use it on its own. So my example would be mother toe. I didn't fit in at Begelin School. I'm going to be quiet while you have a read of the sentence on the script. Another transitive verb is the verb to appreciate plus something. That's the verb. To appreciate plus something. So a lot of people like saying, I appreciate. I'm like, you mental. <laughs> what do you appreciate? It makes no sense. I appreciate. What? Because it's a slang. You know, you see in the making movies, I appreciate. Plus something. I appreciate your generosity. Can you have a look at the sentence on the screen? So, what about if you read in a story and you go, I love? <laughs> I love. <laughs> love is a chastity verb. I love him. I love diet coke. Well, I'm supposed to have it in my saying, haven't it? I love peppermint tea. I used to love waffles, but I'm not allowed to eat waffles. I've been put on a diet. I love waffles. You love what? I love Baba Tunji. Not I love full stuff. Ambitantative, this is where English stats gain a bit 
pedantic. The English is like, it does people's heads then, doesn't it? He's, for to every rule, there's a counter rule. <laughs> That's why you have people like us, the nerds, to help you. Ambitransitive verbs. So some verbs are ambivalent. Ambivalent means what? They change. Can be one thing, can be another. Ambidextrous. I can't with my right hand, I can't with my left hand. Ambidextrous. I'm not, I wish. Ambi. Um, yeah, um, ambi means it can be one thing or another. Ambitransitive verbs. Some verbs can take an object or work without one. Depending on the context used. Ah. Pemper cooks. I can say pemper cooks. I'm saying, yeah, he does pemper cooks. I just thought he does Nisima. So, pemper cooks sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes. When I go pamper cooks, it's the same as saying pamper can cook. Blimey. She drives. So she'll be here any time now. She drives. I Means she, you know, she's got access to a vehicle. Sometimes those verbs have to have an object. So, when I want to say what Pimper cooked, I need an, uh, an object. He cooked sweet potatoes. You're going to ask me, how do I know an ambi transitive verb? I'm going to post a link on the page so that when you've had your nice fufu and a goosey soup, which I can have here because my mum lives in London and I live all day here in Hampshire, and I can't cook with an agusi soup. When you buy your agusi soup, then you can come back and eat it. <laughs> I take the mic, don't I? I take the Michael. She's cheeky. There was a guy here saying, you were so cheeky. I don't mean it. I would laugh. So, my joke made Kenny Kawinja. Is that Kawinja or Kawinga? My joke made Kenny Kawinga, yawn. So, intensive verbs. Some verbs can work without an object. They're intensive. My joke made Pimpo yawn <laughs> yesterday. I didn't have a joke. F were yawned. But, in my story, I could also say, F were yawned at her boyfriend, Papa Tunde's jokes. <laughs> if we yawn, that's her boyfriend's, Papa Tunde's jokes. Please have a look at my examples on the screen. I'm just checking that I've gone over everything on my, on my notes. It's just under 30 minutes this video. If you have any questions, please post them on the screen. Thank you.